The worst tactics I have seen in cycling, part two, Arctic race of Norway, stage four, the last stage, Ben Hermans for Israel Startup Nation in the leader's jersey, four seconds ahead of Odd Christian Eiking, the Norwegian on Intermarche, six seconds ahead of Lefay on Cofidis. He'd taken those four and six seconds in the uphill sprint yesterday when he won on stage three. So for this last stage, name of the game for Israel is defend that lead for Hermans on this 163k stage with an hilly circuit at the end in Harstad. We have a short punchy finish of like 700 meters at 6% and 10, 6 and 4 bonus seconds available to 1st, 2nd and 3rd at the finish. So one would think into Marche would be interested in Iking taking some of those bonus seconds to upset Hermans on GC. Well you would be wrong. Break starts to form, Intermarche are getting Amy de Gent in this breakaway rather than controlling it. Already Lecoq is kind of confused at what Intermarche are doing and it's a big break with Nicky Terpstra, Volsleben and Intermarche have riders at the front blocking not wanting other riders trying to get into this break. So they're happy with a 10 man break and it getting four five minute gap and seemingly happy for De Gent to take his chance at a stage win out of a break of 10 rather than actually giving odd Christian Iking a good chance at going for GC. So Israel Startup Nation literally, I think, were laughing at how easy their first part of the stage had been made for them. They just had to keep the break at under five minutes, not let it get outrageously large. I think the hint was at like 4.30 on GC. They got help from Uskatel and Bora Hansgrohe, so they were even able to stay a bit fresh for this hilly circuit to come and keep their team together. So Israel probably couldn't believe their luck. They get onto this hilly circuit and it's quite attritional. They do like six or seven repeats. There's a 2K 4% climb and then there's a steeper, shorter one, like 700 meters at 6%. And already we could see the cream rising to the top in this break. Volsleben, the German for Alpes and Phoenix, and Nikki Terpstra for Total Energies were the two strongest on the climbs and Terpster was quite active attacking, you'll notice there's no Intermarche rider in this group before. Amy de Gent was already not looking competitive against the other breakaway riders. He had to cash back on on the short descents. He's then struggling at the, he was always in, in struggle street at the back on these hills against the Lettre for Delco, Volsleben, and Terpstra, whilst Israel Startup Nation were just keeping Hermans in good position. But he said afterwards, Hermans, I told my team, don't chase the break too hard. They wanted the break to win to take the 10 6 4 bonus seconds. I think just sitting pretty in the group. They had, by my count, at least three Intermarche riders. Eventually, Terpstra and Volsleben attack and leave the other breakaway riders behind for good. And if I could forgive the curious tactics, Lecoq's confusion at Intermarche's tactics before. Now it goes to, towards unforgivable territory where there's now no chance for Amy de Hent to win this stage. I don't care if he looks like he's starting to catch up at the end, which we'll see. Vosleben and Terpstra are gone. We got last K. I think the gap is like 25 seconds to him. And these two are the strongest anyway. And we have a short, sharp climb to finish. So at this point, Intermarche have to get on the front trying to chase the remnants of the breakaway, see if they can take third and take four bonus seconds, maybe even drop Amy de Hent back to try and help. And when it cuts back, we see Alpes and Phoenix are blocking through the corners because they have Volsleben ahead. So Alpes and Phoenix are not chasing this break properly at all. And Intermarche have two riders, one of whom I assume is Iaking, sitting behind Alpes and Phoenix who are happily letting the breakaway win. And do, I mean, Alpes and Phoenix, they won with Plunkert earlier. I know MVDP is the headline, but they win a lot with their other riders too. And you can see the pace coming out of the race because when you look at the Israel Startup Nation rider who's mid-pack, he takes this opportunity now to move up and try and help Ben Hermans and it's still Alperson soft pedaling on the front. You see the, the group getting wider as everyone's moving up. I think Lechnerson had attacked earlier. So the break is taking more time at this point before the climb. De Lettre and Co have been dropped. They're still in the hunt to take those bonus seconds. And so Intermarche not getting on the front foot at this point or at any point really in the race, except for like the last 500 meters, really gave Odd Christian Iking little chance. And look what happens now. Vosleben and Terpstra are well ahead of the other riders. The angle foreshortens it and they're going up a hill. Aiming to Hent is bringing up De Lettre, even though he's got no chance of winning this stage. There's only 250 meters left, and he's way behind Volsleben, and those guys have been finessing as well. That's why he was even able to get this close. 
He brings and paces Deletra on the flat, who then promptly attacks him as it starts to go uphill. Aelin de Gent goes backwards. So not only didn't he drop back to help Odd Christian Eiking, he then paces the guy who will eventually come third and take the four bonus seconds. Meanwhile, Volsleben and Terpstra, who had no chance of being caught, begin to attack each other and just decide they don't want to ride in each other's draft at all and sprint side by side. And it would have been great to see Terpstra win. He's had a rough couple of years, but Volsleben, the 33-year-old German who was supposed to retire at the end of this year, but has got his first two career wins at Bukul de Mayen, and today gets the better of him. Actually, an ex-cyclocrosser who moved over to road racing, and then we zoom in behind. This is not Amy Verhent. Odd Christian Eiking had attacked from the group. Ben Hermans didn't have his legs of yesterday. And Deletra, the man that Amy Vichand brought up for Delco, is just sitting in front of Odd Christian Eiking. And he rolls over to take the four bonus seconds. Eiking gets no bonus seconds and only takes three seconds on Hermans at the line. Or well, by my count, it was three seconds. It looked really close, but Hermans had four seconds and probably on a count back, he'd won the stage. So maybe that gave him an advantage if they were equal on time. But there were some nervous moments for Hermans. He wasn't sure if he'd won. I think he said he lost GC by, by mechanical in 2015 here on the last stage. But he got the news that he won the stage, wins GC by two seconds, says, Berwick, my boy, blue. And if I was old Christian Iking, I'd be pretty salty on the team bus afterwards, particularly at his home race into Marche. Didn't pace the break, put a rider in the break who never looked really strong enough to win the stage from the break. Then that rider, after he'd been dropped, didn't come back and pace for Odd Christian Iking and actually pace the guy who would take the four bonus seconds away from Odd Christian Iking by about a metre and a half. But another solid win from the 35-year-old Ben Hermans. Here's what he had to say afterwards. Really under control until we hit the local laps. Also, the first local lap was still okay. But then, yeah, it's all about positioning also before the last climb. But uh, the boys of my team, they kept me in front. And uh, they also did a perfect job in controlling the race before. Not to pull too hard, so not to close the gap. And yeah, we were lucky that three guys from the breakaway were still in front also. So I only had to match um, La Fe and Aking in the final sprint. But yeah, I, I got gapped by Aking. I couldn't match his uh, explosive attack actually. And the luck was on my side and it was only two seconds and, and not four. And, yeah, sometimes you, you are the nail and today I was a hammer. But here's the final top 10. Volsleben winning ahead of Terpstra. Eiking two seconds ahead of the other GC contenders. Ben Hermans taking out GC by two seconds ahead of Eiking. Six seconds ahead of Le Fay. I hope you enjoyed this Arctic Race of Norway. Recaps I've been doing. I told you in the previous videos that this last stage, weird things can happen. It's like Paranese stage 8. And we almost had, we had a reverse Lutschenko Bargi today. But if you did like these vids, like it down below. If you did, if you want to see my big Vuelta preview, check out the Lantern Rouge Cycling Podcast. You can subscribe to that separate channel down below, and I might have some transfer content coming up this week. Ciao.